Now that we're back with our public hearing, do I have a motion from somebody, Tim? I don't know. Do I'll make a motion. Okay, make a motion, please, on the next money warrant article. Yeah. I will make a motion that the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of thirteen million eight hundred and eighty thousand. Which Thank article you are you doing? Article seven. 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 For the purposes of constructing the necessary upgrades and making improvements to the wastewater treatment plant as follows. Headworks upgrades, aeration, aeration tank upgrade, primary clarifier, number one upgrade, gravity thickener, number one upgrade, plant water system upgrade, primary sludge pump upgrade, thickened sludge transfer pump replacement, polymorph system upgrade, sep septage handling improvements, operation building improvements, maintenance garage improvements, and SCADA system improvements. SCADA. 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 Such sum to be raised by the issuance of municipal bonds or notes for a period not to exceed 30 years under and in accordance with the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33. And to authorize the Board of Selectmen and the Town Treasurer to issue and negotiate such bonds or notes and to determine the rate of interest there on in accordance with the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33. And to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for a contract for, accept and expend any federal, state, or other unavailable available funds towards the project in accordance with the terms and conditions under which they are received and to borrow in anticipation of the receipt of such funds and or the issuance of such bonds or notes as provided in the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33, and to authorize participation in the State Evolving Fund, SRF, RSA 486, colon 14, established for the purpose and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, accept and expend such monies as they become available from the federal and state governments and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to implement such cost-effective solutions as are presented in the future that they deem to be in the best interest of the town that may result in a lesser amount of expenditure than is authorized by this Warren article, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to take any and all actions necessary to carry out the project in the best interest of the town of Hampton. Three-fifths vote required, recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 400, recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, 801. Fiscal note, Im impact note, finance department. Since the above bond would not be issued until later in 2018 or even 2019, the first estimated principal interest payment of 770500 will not occur until late in 2019. The estimated 2019 tax rate impact is 0.232 per 1,000 valuation. The total of the bond's principal and interest payments over a 30-year period at an interest rate of 2.25% are estimated to be $18,612,750. Do I have a second on that, please? I'll second. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Chairman. Yes. point of order. I believe this uh, tally from the Budget Committee is incorrect. It's got zero nays on it. And I know it's incorrect because I voted nay. Barbara, do you have um, notes on that? When did you vote on that, Tim? I voted on it with everyone else, and I can tell you that I know, and I have the video on it, that Dave voted in abstention solo, I voted nay solo, and everyone else went with the herd. Nineteenth of December. I don't know if I've got those. Do you have the minutes from nineteenth of December, Barbara? Yeah. All right. Take your time. So, Tim, what are you suggesting the numbers should be? I know the last two are one one. So it would be seven one one. I don't know how many people are at that meeting, so I cannot tell you what the yeas were because they just they were just a group of people going along to get along. I do know that Dave decided he wasn't certain enough to vote either way, and he did an abstention, which surprised me. Okay, hold and on. I do know that once again I found myself doing Thank the right you, thing Tim. by myself. Thank you, Tim. Barbara, please. I would confirm that Mr. Jones voted against. Okay, so it should be seven one one. Thank you, Tim.
understand, right? And, and one abstention? Who was the abstention? I, I abstained. Okay, oh, no, Regina. No, no, no. David abstained. So Tim voted no, David abstained. So we have 7 1 1. <clears throat> How many yeses do you have, Barbara? Is it seven? Okay, thank you very much, Barbara. Thank you, Tim. I would correct the I would correct the minutes to show Mr. Moore on as extension. Yes, please. Thank you very much. So this needs to be corrected to on Article Seven to say that recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee seven one one. Okay, thank you very much for making that observation, Tim. Now we had who made the motion on this? Regina made a motion. Do you have a second? Oh, Chuck made the second. Okay. Any other um, any comment from the public? Mayor Louise? Thank you for waking me up. Yeah, um, that's okay. I'm going to address this in gra at greater length uh, at the bond hearing next week. But uh, I have a couple of questions here. You've mentioned a 2.25% interest. Uh, the school got a really good interest rate on the renovation bond, and that was 3.15. Do you have any idea where 2.25 came from? That's pretty low. Are you asking me? Well, I'm asking, asking anybody who person. can answer okay. it. You're asking the wrong person. I don't know who did the bonding. Russ, did you have the a number clue? came from the finance director, Mr. Chairman. Oh. Maybe Christy can help. Let me get out of your way. I used the rates that were from the June bond sale for the bond bank and just took an average between what the rates were for the um, 15, 20, and 25 year and came up with that average of 2.25. And I can tell the committee that yesterday we were in the bond sale for the Lafayette Road and we did get 2.16. Thank you very much, Christy. So, so when it comes time to going out and getting the bond, the rate may change. Absolutely. Right, okay. That, so That helps. Um, now, my other question is revenue. Offsetting revenue. You, the board has not yet assessed an industrial surcharge fee, and I hadn't even heard of it until I read the right Pierce report. Why are we not discussing that? You do have, in a subsequent article, the enterprise fee to take a look at and study. That's going to that's going to mean reconfiguring part of the um, the actual tax calculation. But there it is, Article 28. When you get to that, but wh where are the fees for these big users? We're bringing people in from out of town. We have three major industrial operators here and I don't ever recall anyone talking about imposing an industrial surcharge fee and frankly we're losing revenue and I think the public in a, in a project this size and that supposedly there are going to be two more bonds uh, I'm a little surprised at the 30 year but the whole total is projected to be 41 million dollars over whatever period of time you're, you're dragging this out but what what are the selectmen doing about about in the industrial surcharge fee? Brazonix and Smutty Nose, and Foss, and that's been in place. That's that's referenced. Uh, Smutty Nose came online in 2014. What are we doing here? You're hoping that you might get something, apply for, accept, and expend such monies as they may become available from federal and state governments. Don't hold your breath. I, I have a serious concern about the way this stuff is being handled. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Jerry? Jerry Zeno here, 16 Presidential Circle. <clears throat> One of my favorite subjects, wastewater treatment plant. 
which I worked in in 010, 011, and 012 as a selectman's rep. Anyway, here comes the Wright Pierce report, which I read several times. It's very good. It's a very good report. I think it achieves, I mean, it, it's front to back. I think it's very accurate. It certainly identifies those things that need to be taken care of, replaced. Uh, they even prioritize these items. Unfortunately, <laughs> they didn't cover any of the pump stations, and there's 15 of those. Uh, Church Street is brand new, so I don't think there's any problems there. But we could have a pump station that's about ready to give up the ghost in terms of antiqua be antiquated and have aging equipment and equipment ready to be replaced and failing or being held together by rubber bands and chewing gums and it would be into phase one, I would think, and yet we didn't, we didn't look at the pump stations. I would have done it. It would have been part of the charter. So I consider it somewhat incomplete, that report. It's not their fault. They were probably actioned with the wastewater plant, not the pump stations. <clears throat> which I think is a miss. Um, I've, I've given this a lot of thought. I've been over it a few times, read it, the graphs and the charts. Very good report. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eliminate a lot of the things that I'm not going to repeat what they have recommended, but they have recommended quite a few things. And they kept saying that these things should be done now, right now. Get them done now before any upgrade occurs. This is what I'm going to talk a little bit about. The first thing I want to talk about is the need for aeration. You know, if you look at Table 2-1 on page 2-2, the state should be requiring to review all sewer permits right now because our daily, average daily output exceeds the design limit of 80%. I'm surprised they're not coming down on us. I really am. It's pretty clear to me. We're exceeding it. We're over 80% for the BOS and the total suspended solids. The flow is not a problem. Three and a half million gallons, whatever, that's not a problem. It's the pollutants that are coming in. Problem started in May of 2014 with these pollutants. Wright Pierce was advised that a new industrial supplier had come online in March of 14. The brewery. We experienced a sudden increase of 10 to 40 percent in the influent load in May. The initial increases in the load was approximately two to 3,000 pounds of BOD, biological oxygen demand, per day. An increase of 75% from pre-brewery influent levels. Town has indicated that more recently in 016, the local brewery modified their waste disposal program to decrease their solids and their sewage. Analysis of 216 by Wright Pierce indicates that the influent BOD concentrations are still between 1,000 and 2,000 greater than the wastewater treatment loading prior to brewery connection. That's pounds. Based on existing design capacity, the brewery may be contributing anywhere from 10 to 40 percent of the wastewater treatment overall pollutant load capacity. The brewery is significant, is a significant contributor to both the BOD and TSS pollutant loads to the plant. And the reason that we're exceeding design limitations right now. I suggest that perhaps the brewery should be made the one that finances the needed increase in aeration instead of the Hampton taxpayers. One can say it's quite a buy for them to pay for their taxes approximately 120000 a year while we foot a $6.6 .6 million bill to accommodate their flow. Are we addressing the right audience? Now, I looked at 17. I, I tried to find 17 data. And um, 
I found seven. I found it in the waste uh, in the uh, Wright Pierce uh, selectman's presentation they made with their PowerPoint. Can't find it right here. Thumbing through here, all the stuff that I have. And the problem is, it's got 17 plot points, but in the middle of the chart, there's a big block of data blocking out all my points. So I can't see 017. So I can't see really how we did in 017. That bothers me, and I look at that with suspicion. Here they give me a chart, and I can't read it because they blocked the whole middle part of the chart out with some data. In any case, I don't have 017, and we got a problem. Okay, and I'm <laughs> surprised the state hasn't stepped in already. Quite frankly, now on top of that, the right Pierce has recommended we look at our sewer ordinance 406 and review all the sewer fees for the potential of establishing or increasing them. And there's a host of them including entrance extension, entrances and extensions and state billing rates and septage billing rates, and camper and RVs and wastewater development charges, all of which, you know, can be reviewed. Establish penalties and surcharges for industrial suppliers who violate the user agreements. I don't think we have that today. They couldn't find it. They said there wasn't any. Establish penalties for the sewer violations stipulated in Ordinance 406-6, paragraphs A through G. A lot of sewer violations are in there. No penalties are stipulated. And so on. 406-7, <coughs> establish a penalty for any person found guilty of damaging sewer structures. We should update this required document now before upgrade. We don't have to wait. Control of industrial suppliers. Thoroughly review all new requests for future development that comes through the planning board for flow and load impact. We got a hotel going up. We got a assisted living with an Alzheimer's uh, addition. And I heard through the zoning board the other night, we got maybe 40 to 50 houses going in over on Timber Swamp Road and Mary Beth Highway or we better be on our toes and leaning forward because it could get a lot worse. These wastewater controls must be agreed upon at this step before acceptance. No permit to operate without it. Should contain what we want for limitations and a surcharge should they violate it. And a good sized one. Once in operation, the supplier agreed upon controls must be monitored by the town DPW, wastewater treatment plant personnel, and at set schedules, get in there. They may increase or decrease those schedules depending on the flow results from any particular supplier. Here are some of the things you should be looking for. Is the supplier sampling the wastewater leaving their premise to the agreed upon frequency? We need objective evidence. Where are the records? Do the sampling results verify the adherence to the user agreement? Do the sampling results correlate with the town analysis? Are pretreatment protocols being adhered to before and before release to the wastewater treatment plant? Is the required user reporting occurring? Surcharges per ordinance or user agreements are required. We are to establish procedural and policy controls now. Do not wait for the sewer upgrade. The sewer permit is five years old. It's expired by five years, more than five years. Five and a half. Petition the state to restore the permit to the original design requirements of the plant based on the right peers capacity analysis and their recommendations to do so several times through the report. It will increase not only the millions of gallons a day we can receive, but will also give us more headroom in the T total TSS and the BOD. Do it. 
This would give us immediate relief to the BOD and TSS specification limits and allow more headroom and margin for planning purposes. What is the status of this permit? Why the delay? The new permit very well may require metals reduction, copper, aluminum. It's not unusual. I was in a Billerica plant a few years ago. They were taking copper out. It's a special process and costs more money, capital-wise. It's a big, big drum. It's magnetic. Fred was with me, I believe. Maybe not. I know I had a couple of guys, Doobie and Aslan. This, if this is the case, boy, that would really throw our phase one, phase two, phase three thing out of, out of kilter. So I don't know why we're holding back. It's gonna, it would require, it would require, would require real capital monies to fix that problem. And it might require a, an implementation date as well. Now here comes the taxpayer who has voted for 13.9 phase one, and here we gotta do an upgrade because of the uh, permit. Have that ready in 219, maybe. That's not so good. So we had to go after it, be assertive, be aggressive. Let's find out. This risk needs to be addressed. Septage controls. On average, we take in a million and a half gallons a year of septage just taken in at the wastewater treatment plant. Rice, and I was, I, I was there when they were delivering. Right, Pierce recommends that during the summer months they pull back. We pull back on the deliveries to compensate for the load we're going to get in from the beach. Sounds like the right thing to do. Let's do it for those three or four months, May, June, July, August, whatever, September through the festival. Oh, in addition, and here's key, validate that the gallons he's bringing in is what the gallons he says he's bringing in. In other words, I, I understand it, that the guy goes to the trucker, goes to the town office, and he pays the bill. He says, I'm bringing in 7,000 gallons or whatever. Who's validating that? Who is validating what he's delivering? I didn't see any validation when I was in the plant. That can be done if the guy's got a calibrated gauge at the side of his truck, or he's got the truck pre-weighed and then weighed again. But we got to do it. <laughs> These are controls that are lacking that would contribute to revenue and, and better running of the, of the wastewater treatment plant. Rake-off procedures need to be verified. I understand. I think I understand that when they dump out, they might have, who knows, diapers, rubber wraps, whatever piled in there that they sucked out of a septic tank. That should be raked off ahead of time by them, I was told. If so, let's document and hold their feet to the fire. Cost recommendations. $34.87 million project in three phases. These are planning level costs, quote unquote. Developed using standard cost estimating procedures with industry standards. It makes nothing to me. Total project costs include an allowance of 30% of the estimated construction cost to account for contingencies. That's very high in my opinion, extremely high. This author feels that sufficient cost details are missing to make the estimate believable and a 30% contingency is significantly above industry average. Did suppliers get called? Who were they? What did they quote? Do we have objective evidence of their contacts? Do we know what a 339,000 gallon aeration tank cost and their associated needed plumbing? Aeration makes up 6.6 .6 million of this first phase. Total cost of 16 point or 13.8 million. Who did we speak to? to lend validity to these cost figures. How much work went into the costing of pumps or motors? That's a piece of cake. Pick up the phone, call industrial suppliers, call manufacturers with people who readily supply them, like industrial suppliers or the manufacturers. Do we do any work there? I didn't hear any of that. We need to be convinced that enough due diligence went into the cost estimating to make them believable. Right now, I don't feel so good.
planning. A question was asked of the DPW director at a recent budget committee meeting if a project plan had been developed. The response was no. That would it be developed after the vote. Another question followed to the DPW director as to how long it would take to complete the project. The response was, I don't know. Sometimes later in the meeting, the director offered some rationale to his initial answer, but you might say it was a little too late. Such responses do not give me a good feeling as a taxpayer. Summary. The question of industrial pollutants that affect the plant and the role of the supplier who's doing it and the aeration requirement needs driven needs to be responded to. When it created the problem, got to participate in the solution here. Review and potential increases of sewer fees, as I just went over, need to review. The creation of a policy on industrial surcharges, the septage policy changes for control, procedures for the control of industrial users, no status on 15 pump stations. Create a documented plan for infiltration and inflow. Tell me what you're going to do and when. Expedite new sewer permit, as the current one is five years past due, and who knows about metal removals. Petition the state for the original design ca capacity limitations for Wright Pierce's capacity analysis and their recommendations to do so. Let's give ourselves more headroom. Let's go after them. He said he's no detailed project plan. Cost, es cost, es cost estimates at this time look suspicious to me. And many action items in need of work as described. Taxpayers need to witness action on all these items mentioned on preceding pages. Words like, we plan to do it, don't wash. Quite frankly, they don't wash. Given all that has been said, this author cannot support this project or this warrant at this time. Essentially, without a project plan or costs that are well grounded, and with the many questions, concerns, and we needed actions that have been stipulated, I pass at this time. But I will be listening, studying, and analyzing. By the way, I looked at that chart and that graph, starting with the year 14, 15, 16, I couldn't see 17, and there were many points driven out of control with BOD, the biological oxygen demand, and TTS. And we never before happened to us. In summer months, it went up for three months, but it never crossed the minimum design line. We've been crossing that line since 14, thanks to an industrial supplier or more than perhaps one. And I say to myself, what happens when that hotel comes online and what happens when those houses get built and what happens when that uh, Alzheimer's facility with assisted living comes on? I mean, God, I hope we're on the balls of our feet and leaning forward when these things come through. I would be. They wouldn't <laughs> like me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Any other Comments, questions regarding Article 7? Norm Soberdick speaking again for Rational Taxpayers of Hampton. There is a um, history on capital projects of uh, fundamentally taking the ideal approach to a project and not the most practical one. And in the past, we had a fire station that was projected to be 7.5 million, it came in at 5.8. The Church Street Pump Station was projected 8 million, improved at 4.8 and came in at 3.8. The salt shed, which was turned down several times at 200,000, came in at 150 and sewer pipes, sewer pipe issue across the marsh project for 4.2 million and the total cost to repair it was approximately under $500,000. Uh, 
So is the ideal solution the best solution? And part of what we do is to bring these things to everybody's attention and get the public interested, because the public really isn't interested. When you have voters showing up representing 25% of the potential registered voters to vote on very important issues, and they don't really give a damn about what, so it's left to a few people who show interest. Jerry just gave you an impassioned, uh, or passioned presentation on his uh, review of the uh, Wright-Pierce report. The concern that we have, and we would ask that you reconsider this vote that you've taken on this project, is that if the elephant in the room is Smutty Nose, and we believe firmly that it's Smutty Nose, then Smutty Nose should be participating with the town financially to solve it and not put it on the backs of the taxpayers to solve it. For $114,000 worth of taxes that they're paying for what we believe is their share of the repair bill here and the first $13.8 million is uh, over $6 million. They should be stepping up and paying for that as a good citizen. It's not the responsibility of the average taxpayer who gets enough abuse as it is. So I, and, and I'm going to speak to this in more detail. Uh, repeating a lot of what Jerry said, but I think his points are valid and uh, they should be taken into consideration by this board and the town management held accountable for really presenting good detailed information and answering all the questions that, that arise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Nick Bridal, 225 Toll Farm Road in Hampton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Budget Committee. Uh, I wanted to say that it's not very often that we talk about precedent here. We spoke about earlier tonight the Gristmill Dam article, but I think that um, precedent is a good thing to set. And the rational taxpayers earlier tonight stated that they should have a GoFundMe page for one of the Warren articles, and I think uh, so that would support, directly support the people who do it. And I think that uh, it's not very often I agree with the rational taxpayers of Hampton, but I think that we should consider that for many of these Warren articles. Obviously, I just. I want to say thank you for uh, the Board of Selectmen's recommendation of 4 to 0, and thank you for the Budgets Committee's recommendation for this article. I think it's long overdue, and I think we need to move forward with it. Thank you, Budget Committee. Okay, you're welcome. Any other comments or questions? Seeing. Well, less than a minute. Go, go right ahead. Less than a minute. I can't. I can't uh, disagree with that. Chuck said he's timing you. I found my charts here that I was trying to find before. This chart, I, I, which uh, came out of the uh, right Pierce. Uh, a book and has colored lines on it, which made me understand this chart better, shows that the trouble began in March of, or, uh, yeah, of May of 14. And six months, uh, the rest of the year, we had points out of control over the uh, state uh, requirement, the limit of 6,100 pounds a day of BOS. We're above it. In 15, we had eight months of data points over the spec. In 16, we had four out and two very near the spec line, two of them were very, six you might say. 12 and 13, all points were in. Uh, June and July and August rose a bit, but they were still in, occupying. Okay, please wrap it up, Jerry. Yeah, I and our pre-brewery entry was about 50 to 60 percent. Excuse me, Mr. Capacity. Chairman, point of order. Yes, sir. What were we just interrupted with? Point of order. Yeah, uh, but uh, the question is, what is this one minute? There is no time limit for public comment at a public hearing. Tim, So Jerry, what is, where is this coming from, Mr. On. Chairman? It's coming from Jerry. Jerry said he wanted a minute, and I said, go ahead. Oh, Mr. Okay. Bean was playing the sand, the, the hourglass, I see. Please continue if you... Thank you, you, Mr. Finished? Bean. Are you finished, Jerry? Yeah, one other thing, Mr. Bean. This is the 17 points 
The 17 points are blocked out with a big block saying, hey, this is 14, 15, 16 data that blocked out all the points in 17 that I went to look at. Thank you. Would you call me if we are still in control? Thank you very much, Jerry. Any I make other? a motion that we close public comment on this Warren article. I'll second it. Hold on, hold on. Is there any additional public comment on Article 7? Seeing none, 